All right, without using your calculator, identify the following for this function. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do these in the order here because these are not in the order of the process that we put together yesterday. What's the first thing that you should look for? Holes. Because you want to find matchers, top and bottom. All right, so that looks like a matcher. Okay, and what's the root? Negative 2. So that's a hole. So there's a hole at x equals negative 2. Okay, so the next thing, let's do the x-intercepts. Those are going to come from the numerator. The roots would be negative 5. So at x equal negative 5. And positive 2 should be an x-intercept and the vertical asymptotes come from the roots of the denominator so plus 1 so at x equals plus 1 and that looks like positive 5 okay very good now the last thing is the y-intercept now we haven't talked about that with rational functions, but we've talked about this before, and it's really pretty easy if you think about it in this term. Here, I'm going to come down to this coordinate system. If I have a point right here that crosses the y-axis at 5, what's the x-coordinate? Zero. Well, you have an equation in here. If you plug in zero for x, what are you going to get? The y-intercept. All right, so if you plug in 0 for all these, we would have 5 times 2 times negative 2 divided by negative 1 times negative 5 times positive 2. So let's see. 5 times 2 is 10 times 2 is 20, and it'll be negative. And then 1 times 5 is 5 times 2 is 10, and negative, negative is positive. So negative 20 over 10 is negative 2. That's the y-intercept. Cool? Yeah. Yep. You knew how to do this, just not in this application. Okay. So draw a sketch of the function, identify the x and y, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. So before I use my calculator, I'm just going to do the following. There's an x-intercept at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and at positive 2. There's a y-intercept at negative 2. There's a vertical intercept at 1 and 2, 3, 4, and 5. And there's a hole at negative 2. Okay, so have you all done this on your calculator? I'm just going to guess without a calculator and see if, see if I'm right. But... I see this point and this point right here, so I'm assuming that this thing has to go through both of them, maybe something like that. Is that true? Yes. And then I'm going to guess that if this is going down on this side of the ver vertical asymptote, it's going to come from the top on that side. I'm Again, I'm just guessing. Is that true? Yes. And then, because it's down, I'm going to guess it's up, and I'm going to bet it does that. Is that true? So what's the one thing I've forgotten? The hole at negative 2. So negative 2 is here. So I just go down to wherever that function is, and at negative 2, draw a little circle in. Okay? All right. And I trust that what you graphed on your calculator matches that. Okay. So now, let's do it in reverse. Let's write a function for this polynomial. So, bless you. I'm going to do it 
right down here because it just seems like there's a lot of room here. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the holes first. Okay. So it looks like the first hole is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. So we would have to do the opposite, positive 6. And because it's a hole, you got to have matchers, top and bottom. Okay. And it doesn't matter where you put these as long as you have it top and bottom. Okay, so far? The next hole, so that, I'm going to put a check mark. The next hole is at 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4. So we'd have to do the opposite, top and bottom, like that. Okay? The next thing, vertical asymptotes, I'm going to do those. Vertical asymptotes all go in the denominator. So there's three of them, so there's going to be three linear binomials in the denominator. So let's see. This one is at 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So we do the opposite, positive 4. This one's at negative 1, so we would do positive 1. And this one is at positive 1, so we would do negative 1. All right. And now x-intercepts are in the numerator, and I see we have two x-intercepts. So we're going to have two linear binomials. So let's see, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 5, so we would do positive 5. And negative 2, so we would do positive 2. Now the last thing I see is this y-intercept. Do we need to put anything into the equation for the y-intercept? No, we don't. Because that just comes out whatever it is. If we plug 0 into this equation, it should come out negative 2 and a half. I'm not going to check it because I know my work is good. Okay, but did anybody else check it? Did anybody graph this on their calculator? May I borrow your calculator? All right, so there's the graph, and it's kind of hard to see, but it does look like ours. Here's what we can do. Um, we can press the trace button, and I'm going to check that there's a hole at negative 6, so negative 6, enter, and I get y is undefined, so that's good. There should be a hole at positive 4, so trace for enter, we get y undefined. So that's good. There should be an x-intercept at negative 5. So negative 5, enter, and we get y0. So that worked. And if we put in negative 2, we should also get a y-intercept, which we do. And then we should get vertical asymptotes at negative 4. Undefined, there it is and negative 1 is undefined and positive 1 is undefined. Now how can we check the y-intercept? Could we just do 0, enter? Yeah. 0, enter, and it comes out negative 2 and a half. Bazinga! There it is. <laughs> it worked! Nice. All right. Groovy. Let's turn the page. 